Now let's understand permission boundaries in a way that you can relate with. By now, we already know that a permission boundary is a feature of AWS for using a managed policy. Remember that it's a managed policy. To set the maximum permission that an identity-based policy can grant to an IAM identity. It's a bit confusing. But keep this point in mind, it is going to set a maximum permission, but it does not on its own grant permissions. Okay, it is going to set the permissions, but on its own, it is not going to grant permissions. Suppose I tell you, you are only allowed to play in a play area. Let's suppose this is the room and I tell you that you are supposed to play in this area itself. And I tell you just that and nothing else. And you would think that it generally does not tell you what toys you can play with. Similarly, the permission boundary can set the maximum permissions but does not specify granting them. Thus, if your identity based policy allows you to work with EC2 and Lambda, and if your permission boundary restricts permission to only till EC2, then even though you have permissions to use Lambda, your boundary will not allow that and you will not be able to use Lambda. Still confused? Let's check this example. When you create an IAM user, you can attach policies and as well define its permission boundary. Remember this. And you can use AWS managed policies or customer managed policies that you already created to set the permission boundary as well. Yes, when you create the user, you can always attach policies and as well, you can set the permission boundaries. Generally, we don't do that, but you can do that as well. For example, this is user A's permission boundary. And why is it called a permission boundary? Let's see this. So what does it say here? So if you read the policy here, the effect is allow and the resource is star, which means it has allow permission for all resources. If you see these two statements, allow and the resource star. The action, but the action that you see here tells us that it has only access to perform actions on these operations. That is S3 star, CloudWatch star and EC2 star. So the user who has this permission boundary can only work within these three services s3 cloudwatch and ec2 and therefore the permission boundary will not allow any other service operation to be performed by user a yes that's true if this policy is attached if this policy is also attached to user a which allows iam create user functionality this operation will not be applicable because of its permission boundary and that's where you need to understand a concept called effective permissions the block that you see here is the permission boundary for user A and we have the identity based policy attached to user A and if a policy residing between them doesn't restrict itself under the permission boundary and it still exists on the identity based policy in the Venn diagram then these policies are called effective permissions and effective policies are the intersection of both types of policies like this one and the permission boundary. And yes, an explicit deny in any of these policy overrides the allow. So I hope you got the point. So this is the permission boundary and within which we have two policies and this also is within the identity based policy. So I hope you got the point. Let's move on. Now let's talk about the session policies. It's also a very important concept. And as we already have discussed before, when you think of session, you imagine a scenario where you want to provide a mechanism where each request can be validated that it's being sent by the same user. Session policies are similar to that. Hence, session policies are advanced policies that you pass as a parameter when you programmatically create a temporary session for a role or even for a federated user. But now you will ask me, how will it get permission then? The permission for the session comes from the IAM entity, which is a user or role, which is used to create the session and form the session policy. Thus, if there is a session, there will be a session policy and we need to pass the session policies so that the principal can perform the operation. And we can create role sessions and pass session policies programmatically using the assume role, assume role with SAML or assume role with web identity API operations. And we can use policy ARNs to specify up to 10 managed session policies. And here also we have a concept of the effective policy or the effective permissions for this set of policy types. 
and these are the intersection of these three policy types which is session policy the permission boundary itself and the identity based policy and the intersection defines the effective permission for the session policy and an explicit deny in any of these policy overrides the allow so look at the flow diagram here this is a very good way to understand the flow and before moving forward just keep in mind a session principal or the one who is sending the request is going to be either a role session or an iam federated user session let's check this diagram in iam when you start with a request the decision making starts with a deny now we evaluate all the applicable policies that the request has if there is an explicit deny in the policy or any one of the policy or any one of the statement then the final decision is deny because it has a explicit deny so this is called the deny evaluation if there is no explicit deny it goes to the second condition and checks is the principal's account a member of an organization with an applicable scp so if there is a scp being applied to this if it is yes and it checks again is there an allow there if no allow is there then the final decision will be implicitly denied because there is no scp applied to this so this is called a organizational scp so if there is a applicable scp but there is no allow then the organizational scp will have a implicit deny and the final decision will be denied else if there is a allow then it will check or if this condition also fails then it comes to this condition where it checks does the request resource have a resource based policy so it will check whether the request has a resource based policy there now what happens if there is a resource based policy then it will check whether there is an allow and if there is an allow the resource based policy will determine what has to be done and how it has to be allowed access for and if there is no allow and there is no resource based policy then it will check does the principal have an identity based policy so if there is a policy attached to the user group or the role if not then the implicit deny will apply because that's identity based policy and the user doesn't have any permissions or policies attached to them so that will be a implicit deny and if yes it does have a identity based policy and will check whether there is an allow or not so if there is no allow then it also has implicit deny and if it is yes it, if there is an allow then it goes and checks whether there is the permission boundary attached to it does the principal have a permission boundary and if there is a permission boundary attached to it and it will check whether that condition within the permission boundary has a allow there so if there is no allow then it obviously will be a implicit deny because there is no explicit allow there so now if there is a allow it will go there and will check if the principal is a session principal so if it has been asked from the session principal itself so if this is the session principal then it will check is there a session policy attached to it so we have to pass it programmatically as i told you the session policy and in that if suppose there is an allow then the final decision will be allowed if there is no allow then the implicit deny will be the action that is going to take place and if there is no session policy also it will check whether there is a role session or not if there is no role session it will be implicitly denied if there is a role session the final decision will be allowed and the same goes if it is not a session policy because it does not have a permission boundary and it has a allow in the principal as a identity based policy if this conditions are satisfied then it will automatically be allowed okay for the session principal it will check if there is a session policy if there is an allow in that if yes then it allows the final decision and the final decision is allow and if not then it goes with the implicit deny and if there is no session policy then it will check for the role session and if there is a role session then it will have the request to be allowed and that will be its final decision so i hope you understood the point this is a very good example of understanding how the flow actually works when a request comes so please make sure that you go through this once again read more documents about it and see the flow diagram and try to understand and if you want to understand it again and if you skipped any of the portions then please don't do that so i hope you got the point here and if you want you can just reiterate this portion once again and watch this again so that you get a idea about it and if you have any doubts then please post them in the comment section below